We have a generation with a great degree of entitlement. Are millennials spoiled babies? Being proactive about getting a job instead of feeling entitled to be handed it. The millennials don't get off the couch very often. Selfish, uninvolved, unmotivated. Hashtag lazy. Get a job, go to work. One in eight youngsters have never seen a real life cow. The study says young people are losing touch with the countryside so much that some only see farm animals on TV. I knew myself well enough to know that I would like to work seven days a week, all day, every day. I always wanted to have a farm, but wasn't sure how that was gonna happen. I met you and started a farm. So I, I think we are here. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the pigs when we, when we eat them? I like the ham. Well, okay, we do. The ham too. The ham too? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I love was, bacon. I love the bacon. It's, I mean, that's what I like. My name's Mario bourgou -Ramsey. Born in Montreal. Uh, Mike Kirk. For most of my life, I was raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I bought, I think, a dozen sheep, 20 chickens. I started selling eggs to a small farm stand in Heinsberg, and that demand just kept growing. So I just kept buying more chickens, more chickens, and then the rest is kind of history at this point. <laughs> so do you want cut males or do you want females? I don't. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, it doesn't matter to me either. Female here. <laughs> What did you think of the piglet, William? It was cool. Yeah? Yeah, it's cool. We always look forward to getting them. They're, they're a lot of fun. So. A happy pig, period, is, is the way to do it. You know, our kids would get right in there in the pen and, and scratch them. And, you know, hot days, they'd take the hose and they'd spray them down. And the, the, just running back and forth, they used to do laps in and out of the pen. It was pretty comical to watch them play. We get to do this and we love doing this, but we sacrifice a lot. Once you start a farm, we can barely go away for a night or two. We're doing this out of passion, and because of that passion, we're gonna wake up every morning and do the same freaking thing. You're kind of seeing a shift with younger people, and there's this movement where people wanna know what they're eating and where it's coming from, and it's great. Water pig, water pig. Water the pig. Yeah. <laughs> Last year when we had our pigs, we'd have a picture on Facebook of, of the pigs and the number of people that couldn't believe that we were going to kill them and eat them. They thought that that was horrible. How could you raise an animal and do that with your kids? And, and I was like, that's exactly why we do it. It's very important to us that they know where food comes from, whether it comes from the garden or whether it comes from the pigs. You know, we know how these were treated from day one till the last day and we know what they ate and how they were handled um, for the kids to understand that as yeah. well and right like you know where the chicken comes from that we eat and Gunner, you know watch out pork comes from right right um, not that long ago that's the only way you used to get things yeah you know people are paying attention more and people being more conscious and more aware of what they're doing and what they're buying that's definitely signature of our generation for me it, I needed to know the slaughter process to to feel good about eating meat. You know, that's not for everyone. Some people just like, I'm gonna eat meat, I don't wanna know about it. But working at the butcher shop, I find that, you know, if I do mention it and people get squeamish, it's, I'm like, but where do you think this stuff came from? And then if you're gonna eat the stuff, that's the facts that put this meat in this cooler. You know, you can just change the words and call it processing, meat processing. But to me, it's, you know, it's incredibly important. One pig for us is, is pretty good for a year. Um, but when we've raised multiple pigs, we've usually raised them for other families. I've always been happy to raise pigs for, for others. We do a lot of trading with friends and, and neighbors and stuff. I just trade for canned goods with everyone, which is great. The, the mission of the farm is to produce animals that makes them healthy, us healthy, and the land healthy. You gotta look at the whole system. It's so important to our world and how we live. Caleb and Aaron are living, you know, kind of like a little homestead life. They've made it a priority 
to instill values in their children of the land, animals. That's kind of the, the driving force of how they raise their kids. With just a little more work, you can do it yourself. It's so much more rewarding to plant those seeds, watch those plants grow, and then pick our vegetables and fruit, right? And then have them for dinner. It's amazing to crack that backyard egg. I didn't lay the eggs, but I, I did. I made this happen. I'm not saying that you know we're doing it the best, but we, whatever we're doing seems to be working so far. And so I'm assuming we can attribute a lot of our animal health to the feed quality we buy in. Guys has taken on that, you know, they help everyone from the backyard flock to the small farm and everything in between. Everybody there is so knowledgeable and, you know, you have a question and, and if they don't know it, somebody else who works in the store absolutely knows the answer and it's nice to be able to go there and bounce ideas off them or questions off them. They know my order. You know, it's like going to the coffee shop. It's great that it is a locally owned business. If you've never met them before or you've been in there every day for the last 15 years, right. they still have that same family feel. I got a roof over my head, I can afford all the food that I need to eat, I can pay my bills on time, and, you know, I go to bed happy every night.